Hey everyone, welcome to the Wilson Homestead. So today I'm going down to the veggie garden and I am going to be saving some seeds because in these uncertain times, I'm afraid that I won't be able to get my hands on anything for next season. So I'm gonna save what I can and I just thought I will bring you along and show you the process of doing that. Let's get to it. Here we are in the garden. Before we get started on some seed saving, I just wanna show you what things look like. Everything's pretty much a mess because I haven't had time to keep up with the weeds. But look how pretty those petunias are. And I did have one type of bean that actually made it clear up over this trellis. Pretty cool. Um, the past few days I have picked... Uh, over a bushel of beans out of this garden so it looks rough but it's still producing some all of the tomato plants are pretty much done we had a five day stretch of rain and it just completely wiped these out they're a little bit green on the tips but everything else is just dead I've got a few tomatoes that I'm waiting for these I'll probably pick tonight. A few here and there, but then that'll be it for the tomato harvest for this year. Tomatoes didn't do great this year. It was really late whenever I got them in the ground. It was, I think it was June before I ever got them in the ground. These ground cherries did so well this year. This is a weedy mess right here, but you can see they're almost done. The plants are struggling. But I have all of these ground cherries on the ground that I need to harvest. Pick all of these up. And my plan for the rest of these, we ate a lot of them fresh, but um, I've been cleaning them when I take them inside and putting them in a freezer bag and freezing them so I can make jam later. Ground cherry jam. As soon as I can find some lids, I know you guys have probably felt the struggle too. You can't find canning lids anywhere. So, but as soon as I can find lids, all of these are going to turn into some jam. And I've showed you these before, but I'll show you again for those who haven't watched the other videos. These are really cool fruit. They taste like a, a little fruity tomato. They are delicious. I have three monster cabbages here that I still need to harvest. I'm hoping to make some sauerkraut out of some of this and then the rest of it will either cook up for dinner or I will blanch and freeze it so we have it over the winter. But these are some pretty good sized cabbages. I'm proud of them. This is the first year I've ever successfully grown cabbage, which you can see it does have some bug and slug damage, but it'll still be pretty good to eat. Okay, now for the seed saving bit. These are my cucumbers, and whenever you want to save seeds from cucumbers, you want them to get mature. So you leave them on the plant. Now I'm going to tell you this is a pickling cucumber and you know usually when you want to eat them you pick them very small but if you want to save seeds from them you're going to want to let them get humongous like this and then we're going to take them inside and I'm going to show you what to do with the seeds. I have a few peppers here to harvest some bell peppers and some banana peppers now, when you're going to save seeds from peppers, you're going to want them to get fully mature too. And that means that they're going to already be changing colors, and that way you know the seed is ready to be used. And you can still use the entire fruit. All you got to do is save the seeds out of them. These are big red peppers. And I also have sun bright peppers. Here's another big red. I want to get all these peppers out of here 
tonight because we are starting to get some really cool temperatures and peppers really don't appreciate that. But those are some pretty nice peppers right there. I was really pleased with this variety this year. I'll probably grow Big Red every year. Okay, this is one of the Sunbright Bell peppers. And it is really nice too, but this is the only pepper that I have got off of this plant the entire season. So, I will probably go ahead and save these seeds because this is a huge pepper. I mean, look at this thing. It's beautiful, but I don't know if I'll grow them again. I would like to save a lot of seeds this year because I don't know, with everything going on, if we're going to be able to get seeds. So, if this is all I have, that'll be fine, you know, for emergencies. But if not, I'll probably try a different bell pepper next year, a yellow one. Like I said, Big Red will be in my garden next year for sure. And the thing about saving pepper seeds is they can cross-pollinate. And I am growing some jalapenos down on the other end of the row. So if I save these seeds and plant them, next year I might get a, a cross between the two, which means that they might be hot. But just, you know, for the sake of saving seeds, whenever you don't know if you're going to be able to get them or not, it might be an emergency situation, so I will be saving seeds from these. We are back inside, and I'm going to start with this Sunbright Pepper, this humongous one that I just picked, and we're going to save some of the seeds out of that. I already have a paper plate that I've labeled with the name because I'm going to save a few different types of pepper seeds so I want to make sure that they're all labeled and I'm just going to put into this and all of this I'm going to cut up and put in the freezer for later use I'm going to dice it and I'm probably going to eat a little bit of this one fresh just to see how it tastes but you can see the seeds are located right up here at the top so I'm just going to carefully cut around that okay so here we have all of our seeds well most of them there's still some left in there that I'll get out but we're going to just take our plate and scrape these off of here. And you can get plenty of seeds out of one pepper. Now I'm just going to set these out on the table somewhere where they won't be bothered. Make sure they're spread out so they can dry evenly. And I will probably let these dry for like a week before I put them away. Easy peasy. For cucumber seeds, when you're saving them, you know when you take them out, they have that little bit of like a gel coating around the seeds. And we want to remove that coating. So we're just going to cut this in half. And you can see that there's a bunch of seeds in here. That's why it's important to let these stay on the vine until they're big and ugly like this because it gives the seeds time to mature. Let me see if I can get one out of here to show you. But see it has a little gel coating around it and we want to take that off of there. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a jar and scoop these seeds into the jar. All right, now that we have all of the seeds in there, you can see that that is several seeds. 
we're going to take some water and add to this about as much as it already is in there like with the liquid with the seeds and stuff you just want to add that much more water to the whole thing and then we're going to let this sit on the counter for two to three days you'll just have to watch it but you're going to want to come through once a day and stir this and eventually what's going to happen is all of the good seeds are going to sink to the bottom all of the gel coating is going to come off of it and then I'll show you the next step when we get there if you're worried about gnats or anything getting into this you can always take a coffee filter and sit over this but don't put this in the direct sunlight you're going to want to put this somewhere dark I mean it doesn't have to be completely dark just don't put it in a sunny window and we'll check on this in a couple days okay it's been a few days and these should be done you can see that there are a lot of seeds laying on the bottom and the good viable seeds tend to stay on the bottom and the ones that aren't viable float to the top so what we're going to do now is we're going to run some water in this jar now we're going to let everything kind of settle down again see they all settled back down and we're just going to dump whatever's left on top out of the jar and this will take all of the scum out all of the seeds that aren't viable and then we're just going to keep doing this a few times That looks pretty good so now I've got my little handy dandy strainer here and we're just gonna dump these out into the strainer let me get some water here so I can get them all rinsed out here. and then just rinse them off they look pretty good and then the next step is just to get them dried so I'm gonna put them on a paper plate and spread them out evenly and I'm gonna come through a couple times a day while this is drying and just move them around so that way they don't stick together And then after probably about a week or so, they'll be dry enough that you can put them away. And usually I just either put them in a labeled Ziploc bag or sometimes I just use my like old pill bottles to put seeds in. That's really a cool way to keep them too. So that's it. Cucumber seeds are saved. Now for tomatoes, you can save tomato seeds a couple different ways. You can do the tomato seeds like we did the cucumber seeds where you put them in the water and let the gel sacs ferment off of them for a few days and you can do it that way. Or if you're kind of strapped for time, this is what I've been doing this year because I haven't had a whole lot of time to seed save. So I just cut the tomato on the equator and you can see all of the seeds in here and I just take a paper towel and label it with the name and also I'm getting like to the end of the barrel here on my tomato season so this I just had this tiny tomato left 
but you're going to want to pick your biggest and best fruit off of that plant. You want a nice one to save the seeds from. So anyway, I labeled this mortgage lifter and I'm just going to go into these gel sacks here, these little segments, and plop the seeds down on here on this paper towel. Okay, and I'm not actually saving these seeds, so I'm just showing you what I do, so I'm not going to do the whole tomato. But anyway, I would typically do at least half of a big tomato and spread it out and make sure that the seeds are separated. And then you're just going to let this lay somewhere to dry until it's completely dry. And I have some over here that I dried earlier. Okay, these are all the ones that I saved this year. I've got a pile of them here. And they're completely dry now, so what I'm going to do with these is just put them in a gallon size Ziploc bag and keep them until next year. And then whenever it's time to start tomato seeds, you just come in here and you can either pick off a seed with your fingernail, which is what I usually do, or you can just like rip rip a little piece off like this that has the seed on it without having to separate it from the paper towel and you can just plant that whole piece. Pretty easy. But I saved Golden Jubilee. I saved Mortgage Lifter. I saved Hillbilly. Beef Master, Brad's Atomic Grape, Cherokee Purple, of course, and that does it. So I'm set for next year. Alright guys, that does it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope to see you next time here on the Wilson Homestead. Bye.